everyone. Welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're going to do another physics MCAT review video. So what we're going to do today is we're going to see how to use the equations of uniform accelerated motion. So with that, let's give it a go. So I'd like to first start off by first giving you the main three kinematic equations for uniform accelerated motion that you have to know for the MCAT. So the first of them is going to be VF equals VI plus AT. VF is the final velocity, VI is the initial velocity, A is the acceleration, and T is the time. The second one is XF equals XI plus VI times T plus AT squared over 2. XF is the final position, XI is the initial position, VI is the initial velocity, T is for time, and then A is for acceleration. And then the last of the three is VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta X. VF squared is the final velocity squared. VI squared is the initial velocity squared. A is the acceleration, and delta X is the displacement. So it's important to realize that these three equations are going to be very important for you to remember for your MCAT exam. Now, all of these equations are basically assuming that the acceleration is constant. And luckily for the MCAT, this is going to be the case. All of your questions are going to be dealing with a uniform or constant acceleration. Now for the MCAT, you don't have to know how to derive these equations, but I will have a video in this playlist where I will teach you how to derive them. Now knowing how to derive these equations can serve two purposes. The first is it will help you to memorize these equations, because if you know where these equations come from, you're going to have a better chance at memorizing them. Secondly, it also provides you another tool to use on test day. So by knowing how to derive them, this helps you if you were to possibly forget one of these equations on MCAT test day. So if you were to forget one of these equations on test day, you could quickly derive it on the scrap paper that they give you and therefore get your equation. So knowing how to derive them can possibly add another tool to the toolbox that you have available to you in your head for the MCAT test day. So if you're interested, please check out that video. Now lastly, before we go into the practice questions, please do all of the following practice problems without a calculator. And the reason why is because on the exam day, you will not have a calculator available to you. So it's important to get comfortable with doing arithmetic by hand and, or in your head, and also important to get quick at doing arithmetic because it's also a battle against the clock. So try to do all of these questions without a calculator. So with that, let's give it a go. So the first question that we're gonna look at is this one. So an object starts at a velocity of four meters per second. The object then accelerates to a velocity of 17 meters per second over the course of 12 seconds. What was the displacement of the object? And also assume the object is moving in a straight line along the horizontal, so we only have velocity in the x direction. So take a moment, pause a video, and choose which of these choices is correct. So hopefully you took some time to pause a video and do this for yourself. Now the correct answer is choice a. So now let's see why choice A is correct. So in order to visualize this problem, let's draw a picture. So I'm going to draw a line with two points. So this point right here, I'm going to make it represent the starting point of the object. And we see that the object starts at a velocity of 4 meters per second. So at this dot here, I am going to put vi equals 4 meters per second. The object will then end up a certain displacement away, so we don't know what the displacement is, but wherever that object ends up, it's going to have a final velocity of 17 meters per second. So on this dot here, I'm going to put 17 meters per second being equal to the final velocity. And we also know that this took place over the course of 12 seconds. Therefore, the time is equal to 12 seconds. But what we're trying to find is the displacement. So what is the displacement of this particular object? So in order to do this problem, I'm going to draw a little table of what we know and what we don't know. So what we know is that the initial velocity is, 
We know what the final velocity is, and we also know that what the time is. However, we don't know the acceleration, and we don't know the displacement. So in order to figure out what the displacement is, we need to first figure out what the acceleration of this object is. And in order to find the acceleration of this object, we need to use our equations that we just talked about. So these are the three equations, and from these three equations, we can actually only choose one of them to start off with. And the only equation that we can use to start off with for this particular question is going to be this one. And the reason why is because all of these other equations have too many unknowns attached to them. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for the acceleration. And when we do the algebra, we get this equation, where the acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time. And then when you plug in all of the values, you get an acceleration approximately being equal to 1.08 meters per second squared. So now that we know the acceleration, we can now find out what the displacement is. Now you can solve for the displacement using either the second or the third equation. So you can either use the xf one or you can use the vf squared one. I'm going to use the vf squared one because I just think it's a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for delta x because delta x is going to be the displacement. And when I do that, I'm going to get this expression where the displacement or delta x is equal to vf squared minus vi squared divided by 2 times the acceleration. And then when I plug in all of those values, I get a displacement being approximately equal to 126.4 meters. Now this right here is not exactly equal to any of the choices that we got in our question. And the reason why is because I rounded this acceleration value here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see which of the choices that this closely fits, and it's going to be choice A, because choice A was equal to 126 meters, and this can be rounded down to that, and there is such a wide disparity between each of the choices. So the next question, an object starts at a position marked as five meters with an initial velocity equal to zero meters per second. The object then moves to the 11 meter mark where it has a final velocity of six meters per second. How long did it take for the object to get from the five meter mark to the 11 meter mark? And once again, assume that the object is moving in a straight line along the horizontal so we only have velocity in the x direction. So take a moment, pause the video, and find the correct answer. So hopefully you pause the video. The correct answer to this question is choice B, and let's see why. So once again, let's draw our little diagram. So we have our line here with the two points. This point right here represents the initial position, and this point right here represents the final position. So the initial position is five meters, and it, the person has a initial velocity equal to zero meters per second. The final position is 11 meters, and they have a final velocity at that point being equal to six meters per second. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to make a table showing what we know and what we don't know. So from the question stem, we first of all know what the initial velocity is, we know what the final velocity is, but we don't know what the displacement is, we don't know what the acceleration is, and we don't know what the time is. So before we can proceed with this question, we have to first of all figure out what the displacement of the object is. And the displacement can be calculated using this equation. So the displacement is equal to the final position minus the initial position. So remember that the final position is 11 meters, and the initial position was marked as 5 meters. Therefore, the displacement is equal to 6 meters. So now that we know the displacement, we can now figure out what the acceleration is. And the equation that I used in order to find acceleration was this one. Vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a times the displacement. So when you plug in all of those values and you solve for the acceleration, what you get is an acceleration equal to three meters per second squared. So now that we know what the acceleration is, we can now figure out what the time is, how long it took. So the equation that I used is VF equals VI plus AT. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to solve for time with time being equal to VF minus VI divided by A. And then when you plug in all of those values, you get the time equal to two seconds. So the correct answer is two seconds, which was, I think, choice B. 
So this is our final practice question for this video. An object starts at a position marked as two meters, initial velocity of zero. The object then moves to the 30 meter mark over the course of 10 seconds. What was the acceleration of the object? And assume once again that the object is moving in a straight line along the horizontal, so we only have velocity in the x direction. So with that, take a moment, pause the video, and find out what the answer is for yourself. So hopefully you pause the video. The correct answer to this question is going to be choice C, and let's see why. So let's first draw our little diagram once again. So we have our two points here, the initial point and the final point. Remember that the initial position is marked as two meters and the final position is marked as 30 meters. And we know at the two meter mark, which is the initial position, that the person had an initial velocity of zero meters per second. And we know that this took place over a period of 10 seconds. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a table showing our known and unknowns. So we know the initial velocity, we know the time, but we don't know what the displacement is, we don't know what the acceleration is, and we don't know what the final velocity is. So remember that what we're solving for is the acceleration, and lucky for us, this is a pretty easy question because we only need to use one equation. And this equation that we're gonna use is this equation xf equals xi plus vi times t plus at squared over 2. So from this, we can plug in all of our values. The final position is 30 meters. The initial position is 2 meters. The initial velocity is 0 meters per second. The time is 10 seconds. And also the time is 10 seconds, which we plug into t squared here. And when we start doing arithmetic, we get this equation. 30 equals 2 meters plus a times 100 seconds squared divided by 2. And then when we solve for the acceleration, what we get is an acceleration equal to 0 0.56 meters per second squared. So that's why this is the correct answer here. So that's it for this video. I hope this video helped you get a little bit of an understanding of how to use these equations. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.